Question number four, uh, how should we know if God is giving us a spiritual gift? <clears throat> well, I remember years ago, I was actually preaching in Ireland at the time, reading a book about the gifts and getting kind of frustrated and saying, Lord, there's so much teaching about the gifts that isn't in the Bible. Why didn't you write a chapter? I'm a very systematic, you know, I'm a guy. I don't think like a ball of wool. I think like a flow chart. I think in boxes. And I was like, Lord, why didn't you write a really simple guide on how to use the gifts? Um, and with all the questions answered. And it's like straight away, the Lord shot back in my heart and said, Graham, I didn't do that on purpose. And there are things, things like salvation, righteousness, that God did do that. Paul writes like literally like a legal treatise in Romans about salvation and righteousness. And yet when it comes to the gifts, it's what I felt the Lord say to me. I felt the Lord say to me years ago, Graham, I want the gifts to flow out of a, a relationship with me, out of a life of consecration and service and relationship with me. Hey, Aggie. Aggie the dog. So how do we... <clears throat> How do the gifts flow? We really come back into that relationship with the Lord. We seek Him. We listen to Him. Now, I think at times, there are, there are going to be times where it's really clear um, that God wants us to speak or God wants us to pray for somebody or do something. But most of the time, there's going to be that leading of the Spirit where it is subjective. It could be God. It could be us. Where we're not quite sure if it's God and not quite sure if it's us. What I've actually learned is that whenever God's speaking to me or wants me to move in the spirit, it's like I get an ever so slight feeling of leading and it's very easy to miss. And then I'll usually hear a doubt that's 10 to 50 times louder than God's leading. And it's like Satan wants to, excuse my dog walking, Satan wants to stop me moving in the spirit by flooding me with doubts. Now, I've actually learned that when I find myself in that scenario where I get a little feeling, maybe pray for somebody or speak that word or whatever, and then boom, the doubts come. That's like a tell, like a poker tell to me that Satan is trying to stop me and it really was God. So how do we move in the gifts? How do we tell when God's given us a gift? This is what I would do, though. I come to church uh, every week with a clean, clear heart, and I'm actually saying, Lord, I'm not going to go hunt. I don't want to manufacture something in my own heart, but I am open to anything you want me to say or do. And I know when I'm in that place where it's like, Lord, I'm just ready. I'm ready for whatever you give the word. I'm going to jump. And then in that context, I expect God to give me things. And when I get something, I don't go. Is that God? Is that me? Is that the devil? I assume it's God. And I've learned that serves me really, really well to... My life is under the blood of Jesus. I'm walking in fellowship and right f fellowship with him and right standing with him. I'm nothing against my brother. I'm no unforgiveness. And then if, I, if I'm not sure if it's God or not, I'm going to go with it. I, I'm not talking about doing some crazy thing or, you know, leaving my home or doing something. But I'm, I'm saying if I'm in church and I get a little feeling, hey, go pray for somebody or speak this word of life and encouragement. Well, that's not the devil. That's God. And that's served me well. Uh, over the years. So I believe there's a, there's a walk of faith. John Wimber used to say faith is spelled R-I-S-K. So there's a walk of risk. There is a walk of taking chances in a good way, in a safe biblical context. And there is a, a place of coming back to that relationship and trusting the voice of the Lord that you walk and talk with all day long. Hope that helps.